everyone and welcome back to my studio the pottery corner down on the south coast of england near chichester um brilliant sunshine this week we've had a lovely week of uh charging the solar panels so the kiln has been on for another kiln glaze firing so we're going to dive in and see what the students have been up to um i think there might be a couple of my pieces in here if we're lucky um so let's have a look and see what we've got Right, so top shelf, uh, there's a big bowl of Emily's, um, which is hand built. I'll just lift it out carefully. Uh, so this is hand built uh, over a bowl mode. So we have a big glass serving bowl upstairs, which we cover with cling film before the slab goes over the top of it, just to stop it from sticking to the bowl. Um, and then it's left on the bowl mold for a couple of days for it to harden up sufficiently to support itself before it gets flipped off um, and makes this lovely bowl. And it's nice because it's a big bowl, um, plenty of sort of servings for four or six, so it's a nice big family-sized bowl. Uh, this is, um, I, I had to ask Emily what the glaze combination was. So the um, big bowl inside is sapphire float, um, which is a lovely Amoco glaze and it does this sort of speckledy, spotty thing all on its own. So it's actually really very pretty, lovely glaze. And on the outside, she's done two coats of uh, Emerald Falls and which is under two coats of Sapphire Float. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? Actually quite nice. I quite like that. It's a nice green um, and it's just breaking slightly on this top edge. Yeah, nice. So that's um, Emerald Falls, Amoco Emerald Falls times two underneath Sapphire Float times two. So yeah, nice bowl. She's wiped back the rim to leave it um, just clay body colour. So it's quite nice to have the contrast. So yeah, lovely bowl. Well done, Emily. That's a goodie. Uh, next out, this is uh, Nicholas. This is, so Nicholas coming to free flow sessions in the studio. Um, so this is uh, her throwing and this is Amoco's light sepia three coats. Now, if I'm being picky, but bearing in mind that Nicola is a beginner, that's a little bit patchy and probably needs to have the glaze applied one way round and then the other way round and then in a different direction. Just so that you don't get this, you can see where the brush started there and there and there and here so you know you can see where the glaze has been applied now actually i don't mind it particularly when it's a an opaque glaze like that because it does give you slightly more interest in the glaze um, but yes you can see where the glaze has been applied i like it when they leave a band around the bottom in clay body uh, color because obviously it saves me put a cookie underneath it so yep that's really nice like sepia three coats this one is trina's um just a little thrown lipped um, jug. And again, Trina's a beginner, so really pretty actually, lovely color. This is Mako's Turquoise. Um, I'll stick on the screen which glaze number that is, because there seems to be so many turquoises. So I'll pop the, um, the actual glaze number on. Really very pretty, lovely color, lovely and summery. She wants it for her um, summer table, so that'll be lovely. This one is, again, this is Nicholas. Now, this is the new, one of the new Mako glazes, Mako stoneware glazes, which is called Rose Quartz. And I've done a whole set of um, glaze test tiles in these new glazes because I had the box delivered a few weeks ago. So this is uh, Mako's Rose Quartz, and that, that will be two layers of that. Um, and that on the test tile is two layers. I think if you use three layers, you are in danger of putting too much glaze on and it, then it goes a bit of a funny pitted surface. So yeah, really nice, but isn't that pretty? And again, she's left the clay body border around the bottom. She has a little bit of a drip, but actually I quite like that. Shows it's handmade. So that's a really pretty little olive dish as I believe it's going to be. So that's Mako's Rose Quartz. Now, um, in the last kiln opening, and I'll try and take a clip and show you how horrible this bowl was before it was reglazed, um, one of Philippa's 
bowls came out um, and she'd uh, glazed it in Mako's glowing embers. Now glowing embers is a bit of a funny glaze and it does funny things. Um, and it had very nasty um, pinholes actually across the whole center of the bowl. So I said to her, be worth reglazing it. So um, we sprayed it with hairspray. So this is how I reglaze. Spray your item with hairspray, not so that it's dripping, but so that the glaze has something to adhere to. Um, and then we've added on top of the original uh, two coats of glowing embers, one coat of Amoco Temaku and one coat of Amoco's oatmeal. So the Temaku first and the oatmeal over the top. Now, those of you who've been watching my channel for eons will remember that I had a, a large dinner plate that I'd done that I was giving to my husband. And in the end, I think I'd refired it about four times and it had so much glaze on it. And then the last combination was this. So I showed it to Philippa and said, why don't you just give it a go? You haven't lost anything because it's not a, it's not nice as it is with the glowing embers with all the horrible pits on it. So why don't you just reglaze it and we'll fire it again and see what happens? Well, yeah, I was right. Isn't that pretty? Really, really pretty. And that's a really pretty, unusual bowl now. So I'm sure that Philippa will be delighted with that. Hasn't changed the back, of course, because we didn't put any more glaze on the reverse. Um, but actually, that's made that into a really interesting little bowl now. So I hope that Philippa is uh, impressed with that. Um, and talking about the Mako, um, I'll whiz through these because I know a lot of you are already using these glazes. I always do my test tiles on a textured tile and it's interesting to see which ones show the texture and which ones don't. So this is Mako's Peppered Plum, two coats. This is Ivy, two coats. That nicely shows the texture. Uh, breaks on the surface of the texture too. It's a slightly matte finish, like a sort of satin, satiny finish, quite like that. Uh, this one is Riptide. Yeah, that one shows the texture. Look at that, that's pretty. Quite a nice sort of subtle blue. And again, um, I don't know if the camera's picking that up, but that is a satin finish, not, not a gloss finish. So quite useful for those people who aren't so keen on the gloss um, versions. This one is Nimbus times two. Now, one of my viewers commented that Nimbus runs so be careful with it. This is two coats of Nimbus. Can't say that I'm overly impressed with two coats of Nimbus, really. Um, it's quite a nice sort of denim blue. Um, I think it's probably going to be one of those glazes that looks a lot better when it's used in combination with other glazes. I wouldn't necessarily say that I'd use that on its own, but that's Nimbus two coats. Um, this one's pretty. What's that? Ooh, ah, right, okay. That's interesting. So as you know, I'm a bit of a radical when it comes to using jungle gems um, and I take them up past the temperature they're supposed to be taken to. So jungle gems should usually be um, done to just over a thousand degrees C, so like a bisque firing setting. Um, and I take them up to my stoneware glaze firing, which is 12, 25 degrees C. So this one is called Monet's Pond. So that is a Mako Jungle Gems Monet's Pond two coats. Very pretty background colour, but it hasn't got very much interest in it, which is what usually happens with the Jungle Gems. They usually have sort of speckly bits of glass and what have you. Um, but I think that's worth using on a bigger piece to see what happens to that. Very pretty background colour. Looks lovely on that texture, showing up that texture. Lovely, like that one. Uh, this one I don't like, of course, because guess what? It's brown. What were Mako thinking? Brown gloss, two coats. I'm not going to say what it looks like because I don't really need to. But if you wanted to put that emoji on, you know the one I mean. Yeah, that is exactly what it looks like. Least said, soon is mended. I guess you could use it underneath things and it might be quite interesting to do some combinations of these um these 12 new glazes in combination to see what happens to them. But yeah, very uninspiring, nasty colour. So I shan't be using that on my work. Uh, this one is gloss pink. So out of the same new Mako stoneware glaze um, range, this is gloss pink, two coats. Very nice, slightly opaque 
um, base pink colour, but it's difficult to get pink glazes, as you'll know. Oh, Sissy's just walked in. Hello, Sissy. Uh, this one is Fossil Rock. Hmm, again, quite nice. Again, a matte glaze, very much like um, Mako Sea Salt. Um, but I quite like that. That's that's quite nice, isn't it? It's sort of like a slightly off off white, off yellow. Very nice and a, and a matte surface. Again, it it doesn't really show the texture, but it is it is um, sitting in the texture, but it's not breaking on the surface. But quite nice fossil rock, not bad. Um, and this one I love because this is the colour I like to have my toenails painted in the summer. Don't laugh. <laughs> Gloss Coral, how about that? Isn't that lovely? So it's not red and it's not orange. It's kind of in between. Really pretty, I really like that. That's lovely. And again, just about showing the texture underneath. Pretty. And actually, further down in the kiln, uh, one of Emily's pieces has got this on, so we'll see it slightly larger. So very, very nice. Quite like that. Um, so that's all the testers of... Well, actually, there's two missing, but um, we might come to those further down. So I'm going to get this shelf out and we'll see what's next. Right, OK, what have we got next? There are actually a couple of my bits and pieces in here, which is rather nice. Uh, first off, we'll do uh, Leslie's little vase. I'm going to have to not... Oh, no, the cookies come off. Jolly good. Hence the reason for using them, as you know. Um, so Leslie was doing um, spaces for her totem. And she had one left over, so she's just popped a bottom on it and made it into a little vase. Really sweet, actually, this sort of tree trunk design. Um, so that's a little bit of um, Mako's Aurora Green with a tiny bit of Cosmic Tea Dust on the end. And then the actual uh, trunk is Mako's Winter Wood. Yeah, nice. Isn't that sweet? If you could imagine that with just some primroses or something sh short out of the garden that'll look really sweet I think she's actually going to make a set of them so that would be nice to sort of have three or four or five of them with different blooms in from the garden so yeah very pretty good idea and a nice little thing uh, next out is one of my new mugs Ooh, wonder what that was ah now that's interesting okay I do know what it is. So this is a hand-built mug that I've then turned on the wheel to make it look like it's thrown, but it wasn't because it has this lovely texture on it, which I hope the camera's picking up. In fact, it'll probably be easier to see it on the other one, but I think it probably is showing it up, um, which is done from a wooden um, gnocchi pasta um, uh, board which I bought online in fact I bought it from Etsy really lovely um, so yes now this should be <laughs> uh -huh. Mako's oxblood yeah I mean you know the tiniest portion of that is just showing in this texture here so actually I need to put some more glaze on there because that has not shown the oxblood at all and it's really very pale there's a tiny little bit on the handle if you can see it i find uh, mako's oxblood is a little bit of a temperamental glaze um, it seems to me that you have to put about 18 layers on i'm exaggerating uh, uh, lots of layers on just to get it to do what it's supposed to do um, and it was nice deep texture on this mug so that's disappointing that hasn't shown up um, and I've just used my normal uh, Amoco Mixing Clear on the inside. So that one I need to reglaze and we'll see what happens to it next time. Right, this one, on the other hand, is done with the same uh, roller. So the same um, pasta plate with, with this lovely design on it. Uh, and the glaze on here, this on this blue, is um, Amoco Storm. Um, and then I'm going to have to look at the storm on the texture, transparent inside, and amber ash. So, yes, that lovely amber ash that we were using. So I put a, a, just a, a layer of amber ash just on this top section here. Now, um, eagle-eyed, again, we'll see pinholes, pinholes, lots and lots of lovely, lovely pinholes, which is disappointing so again, that one's going to be another one that needs to go into the um, reglazing, refiring pile. But the storm's very pretty. 
and uh, shows the texture well so yeah pretty pleased with that and again just um, my transparent on the on the inside so ideas there these are so, sort of still slightly prototypes but um a nice mug and a nice size because of course i've i've hand built these um so i can make them a little bit bigger but for people who like a lot of coffee or a lot of tea for that matter yeah so very pretty right next uh, that is the second of um, Avi Smugs. So again, those of you that watch my channel, um, I have added a bit more Weeping Plum to this and then refired it. This is for my breast surgeon. I'm coming up for my 10 year anniversary later on uh, this summer. Um, so I thought I'd make him a couple of mugs with boobs on. Why not? You know, that's what we do as potters, isn't it? We kind of sort of um, take an idea and run with it. So I thought it'd be quite funny for him to have a booby mug on his desk. Um, right, this is a test tile. Ah, okay. So I went to Blue Matchbox, um, and again, he he's based in Reading. Grant, uh, based in Reading, has just moved from a shop to a mahoosive industrial um, unit just outside of Reading. And we went, uh, Steve and I went away in the caravan and we weren't very far away. So I said, if it wasn't very far, could we go? Um, so I did buy myself a few glazes that I probably wouldn't normally um, have ordered online without actually seeing the, the test tile in, in the shop, so, so to speak. So this is Bot's Smoky Quartz, two um, layers of that. So two, um, so two layers of Bot's Smoky Quartz, nice. So it's grey, but it's got almost like a tiny fleck in it, like like if you'd used a flecked clay. Hmm, quite nice, very nice colour, like that. In fact, I like this grey, silvery grey. It's better than Amoco's Smoke, which I don't like quite so much. So yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy with that. That's lovely. And I have actually got one more of these mugs that I haven't yet glazed. So I might well put that, I might well put that on there. Pretty, very pretty, like that. Uh, and that is just a test tile of a new underglaze. Um, I was um, my dear mugs, which I will do a tutorial on. I'm just um, getting myself in a position to um, do that. I've, I've bought some more transfers, and I've asked Karen, my friend, to do some vinyl stickers for me. So we'll get to that um, particular tutorial. So watch out for that in the next sort of month or so. So this is a new underglaze to me. It's um, an Amoco underglaze called Terracotta. Um, I wanted a sort of a brown. I, I for some reason don't have, well, I know, not for some reason. I know why I haven't got it, because it's brown and I don't like brown. Um, but I needed a brown for the deers. So I thought, well, if I, if I got a brown, I could then add other colors into it and just sort of tone it. So that's, that's quite nice, actually. Not a bad, not a bad t um, tone. Um, and when I do an underglaze tile, I do, half of the tile covered in transparent and half of the tile not so that people can see what it looks like both ways so if they didn't want to actually put a glaze on the top of it then they could uh, just use just the underglaze on its own quite nice all right next uh let's have a little look just take that half shelf out i've got a few props just to get rid of so they don't fall on the work I don't like leaving them in there, just in case. Right, now. Okay, so let's start with George's. Yeah, this has done really well. So George, I was talking about George's um, Japanese calligraphy uh, a few kiln openings ago, but one of my students actually has his um, Japanese calligraphy um, marked i suppose you'd call it by a master in japan can you believe i thought he just went to a local class but no 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 george um goes has his work marked by a calligraphy master in japan so he's hand built this uh cylindrical vase it's got mako sea salt on it which is actually really quite nice i quite like that surface it does make it look sort of oriental i hope the camera's picking that up um, and then George has done a line of calligraphy on the on the side, which worked really, really well. So I hope that he's going to 
um, continue to sort of have a look at how to use that in his work and maybe do um, another vase with a little bit more detail on. So we were slightly trying it out on this one, um, but that's worked really well. Isn't that lovely? That, that'll look really lovely on his side. So I hope that George is pleased with that one when he gets back. Uh, next, there's a couple more test tiles in here. Uh, this one is uh, Mako's Amaryllis. Now, I really like this. Woohoo! Look at that. Pretty. So that's the, one of the new stoneware glazes from Mako called Amaryllis. Again, that's two coats. Um, so you don't have to apply three coats with the Mako glazes, I found. Two coats is better. So, yeah, that's really pretty. And indeed, I think I did put it on a mug because I thought I'd try it. Um, this is a test tile of Bots Onyx Black. Again, I have used that glaze before uh, when I couldn't get hold of Amoco Obsidian. It's not as black as Amoco's Obsidian. Amoco's Obsidian is a little bit more opaque. The Bots Black is a little bit um, uh, not quite so dense, so it's breaking on the texture, which is actually really quite nice. I quite like that. So that's Bots Onyx Black Two Coats. Yeah, nice. Uh, next, oh, nice one, test tile. That's pretty too. Now, the girls all like a purple glaze. So that one is, again, the new Mako Stoneware Passion Flower, two coats. Quite nice sort of crystal formations in that. Yeah, very pretty. And I know, as I say, quite a lot of the girls like purple glazes. So um, they'll like that new one. Uh, next, we'll do this little pot which um, looks like it's, whose is that? Oh, it's Emily's, nice. So this is Emily's. I would say that that is Amoco's oatmeal on the outside. Has she told me? Let me have a look and see if it's on my phone. So I did ask her. Uh, a vase, no, no. Okay, so I'm guessing, but that's what I'm guessing it is. That looks like, it's either, oh no, it might be Iron Luster. Amoco's Iron Luster, or it might be Amoco's Oatmeal, one of the two. Um, and then on the inside, so we were talking about this beautiful um, coral gloss. Yeah, love that. Isn't that nice? Super. That's a lovely combination, actually, of the two together with that bright interior. Very pretty, like that. Uh, next, I'm going to do Emily's toadstool. So Emily's going to make a series of these toadstools with a like a cake stand. So like a tiered cake stand with um, mushroom tops on them. So again, that is the um, gloss coral gloss from Mako. She's left these um, raised sections which are done in slip, uh, white, and then just popped a tiny bit of mixing clear over the top. And then the toadstool body is oatmeal. Yeah, so the other one is oatmeal then um, because they're the same. Um, that's really very pretty, isn't it? Really nice. So that, that is oatmeal that's on there because that's the same glaze. Very nice. Like that a lot. Sweet. Lovely colour. Very nice. So that's come out really well. And then in the same theme, uh, Emily has made a hand-built mug again great i would have probably put the coral gloss on the inside of that as well but that's oatmeal on the outside the coral gloss on the mushroom of the handle and then she's used amber ash just on the gills of the mushroom underneath and that's been very successful love that yeah that's that's come out really well emily look at that very pretty a lovely mug i mean you'd have to be really careful how you used it but very very pretty and a very good glaze application on there. That oatmeal has done really well. So lovely and a, and a big mug, you know, a lot of caffeine in that one. So yeah, that's that's really good. Really like that. Very nice indeed. Next out is Emily's um, vase. Now, <laughs> uh, there's always one thing, isn't there? There's always one thing. So um, Emily wanted to make it like a Cornish tin mine. So this part that's here used to be here. <laughs> so we had a chimney which came off in the bisque firing and we thought we'd try and stick it with some glaze. But what the inevitably, what I said might happen has happened, which is it slid off 
and stuck itself to the outside. Now, does it detract? Hmm, not sure, not entirely sure. But that is the glaze combinations on there are, let me find it, uh, toasted sage three times inside and out. So this is toasted sage. And then uh, the waves are sapphire float. So this bottom section here, the blue, is sapphire float with toasted sage over the top. And um, the mine bit is um, iron luster. So yeah, that's a shame that that's happened. Um, but actually I quite like it. And then she's got this sort of like staircase bit that's going up to the mine along the, um, along the cliff. Yeah, pretty, isn't it? Very pretty. Um, unfortunate, but you know, it's worth having a go when something happens like that. Um, so that is that one. Um, last piece of mine in here. Yeah, look at that. So that's that Amaryllis, the, um, uh, the new Mako Amaryllis. And that inside is Sand Dollar. Um, I haven't actually got a test tile of that. I wonder if it's upstairs. Oh no, it's here. <laughs> I knew it must be somewhere. It's here. So this is Sand Dollar, again, coming out of that samples box, two coats. Um, and again, that's sort of a slightly sort of satiny matte glaze, if the lights are picking that up. Um, so that is uh, Mako Sand Dollar inside with two coats of Amaryllis on the outside. And again, I've left quite a big border here of just clay colour. That's worked quite well. Quite like that one. Quite nice. Nice handle on it. A little bit of drippage going on, which again, I don't really mind. I quite like that. Very pretty. Yeah. What do you think? Not bad, that one. Sits in the hand nicely. All homemade mugs sit in the hand nicely, don't they? So yeah, that's quite good. Quite like that one. Hmm, pretty. Right, and the last thing in this kiln um, is Jill's. Now this is a bit of a masterpiece and Jill is a very, very good artist. Um, and actually didn't show that she could even draw for some time when she's been coming to the classes. Um, but when she did, it was like, wow, you can draw like that. She made that beautiful bowl with the goldfish in, if you remember. Um, so this is a hand built vase. Um, so Jill has made a template of, you know, the the um, cardboard thing that flowers with an aqua pack come in when they come from a florist. And she said every time she gets one, she thinks it's a really good shape for holding flowers, which is very true. It is. So she's taken a template and made her own version. So this is her hand built um, vase. Now, <laughs> quite a lot of pinholes on there. That is seaweed doing something naughty. So she's done like a monster relief design on there. Actually, it's been really nice. This is Weeping Plum, the pink. Quite nice. And she shadowed the pink with a little bit of raspberry mist. Yeah, not bad, actually. It's a shame that there's a bit of pinholing in it. But isn't that pretty? And again, I mean, you know, she's really talented, isn't she, to to do all of that on there and that's all hand painted beautiful really really pretty so she's in tomorrow so i hope that she'll like that we might have to think about putting a little bit more glaze over the top of here and refiring it to cover up these pinholes but she might say she doesn't mind them as it's on a vase and inside she's used the weeping plum just on the top and then mixing clear further down where we don't need to use the color so yeah it's quite a big vase so it'd take a nice big bunch of flowers. So yeah, that's really good. Lovely. Right, let's pop that there. Don't drop it for goodness sake. Right, okay, we've got a couple of shout outs today, so I'll get those. Okay, so who's been writing to me this week? First up, we've got Eliza Horston from uh, the Netherlands. So I have finished the hydrangea, a green one, a blue one, and a pink, but the pink is too light. Uh, next time I have to do more glass. I've also included a picture of the poppy seed bulbs. Hope you like it. So thank you for sending me these, Eliza. Uh, so these are Eliza's finished hydrangea heads. And if you haven't seen the three part how to make porcelain hydrangea heads, head over to the playlist. I'll stick the link on the end uh, for you to have a look at. And again, there's a kit in my Etsy shop 
uh, with the glass and the template and the cutters. So those are really lovely. And actually seeing them in situ, you can see how nice they are. That They sit above the foliage in the garden. So that's the hydrangea heads. And then she's made some little poppy heads, which again, she's done in the same way to put on canes in the garden. Lovely. Those are really nice. Thank you for sending me those, Eliza. And I loved this one. Um, this is the title of this email is can't stop exclamation mark and it's from Virginia um, <laughs> it says you may smile but my family are goggle eyed my 88th birthday is on the 3rd of June so you will have just had your birthday by the time this video goes out uh, but today is the 1st of June so we're a couple of days away from your 88th birthday Virginia uh, she loves she loves making these hydrangea heads and she's made a few peonies to boot and she's got four butterflies using the same base. So yes, taken the original idea of the hydrangea heads and then as we usually do as potters, taking it in a slightly different direction. Those are gorgeous and uh, I love this one. She clearly can't stop. I, I haven't actually counted how many there are. But aren't they lovely? Aren't they super colours? Really lovely. I really like those. Well done, Virginia. I mean, um, yeah, there's quite a few there. And in fact, um, Virginia sent me a little note this morning uh, just with the butterfly cut out. So I've asked her to send me a picture of those once they're finished. So that is your lot for today. Um, continuing to be very busy in the studio, although we are coming up to summer holidays, so um, I'm not going to be around for a few weeks, so um, nothing wrong, just uh, taking a little bit of a break. So if you don't see me for a few, few weeks, don't worry about me, I'll be absolutely fine enjoying the sunshine. I hope you're enjoying the sunshine where you are and getting out and about and uh, taking inspiration from what you see around you. Been great having you along. Thank you so much for watching. Catch up on a couple of bits and pieces on the recommendations I put at the end and I'll see you all on the next one. Bye for now.